Hi, my name is Kathleen Ryan Ackley. I'm the owner of By Kate, and I'd like to share with you some of the exciting technique for piecing one unit patterns. I'd like to start with some of the history of this type of quilting. In January 1835, Godey's Ladies Book produced its very first pattern, and it was for a hexagon, saying that it would teach young girls how to stitch. Since that time through now, the hexagon has proved to be a very popular pattern. This is a wonderful example of a quilt from approximately 1840s. And you will notice that they started with one hexagon and went out from there into a pattern and finally into a random mosaic. They did this by drawing a pattern on paper. And you can see here writing from an early, early notebook lined paper. Then they basted their fabric around this paper and then they whip stitched it with a very tiny, tiny stitch from the back so that they could have a quilt. As you can tell, this is a very laborious, time consuming and exacting way to do it. I developed a set of stamps to simplify and make this process much more accurate, easy, and fun. This is an example of flea market found blocks that we set together using the rubber stamps. These are some of the supplies we need to get started. First we will need a permanent fabric ink. I have a archival fabric ink that will not bleed through, will not wash out, it just sits there, which is really nice. You need your rubber stamps, you need a paper towel for safety sake, and you need a handy wipe of some kind to clean the stamps with, and of course your fabric. Let's get started. The ink is a raised bed, so whether you're using a large or small stamp, it's very easy to pat down the ink and it's ready to work. You can test it on a paper towel and I use a paper towel to make sure that I don't make a mistake and get the ink on my good fabric. Then you simply stamp the back of your fabric and you'll notice I am only stamping in the middle. It doesn't matter if this isn't done completely. The next one will be lined up right next to it to save fabric and off you go. You stamp the images that you need on the back of your fabric. When you're finished stamping, you can clean the stamp with a moistened towel or a handy wipe. While the ink is wet, it comes off very easily. Then, be sure to put the lid back on your ink and store it in a Ziploc bag. Now it's time to cut. As you can see, we have both a cutting line and a sewing line. So if you overlapped or if you don't cut very straight, it's still okay because we have a perfect sewing line. So find a good movie and cut away. Let's talk a minute about sewing supplies. I use a good quality sewing thread. Quilting thread just won't work. The needles are sharps and my favorite is by Richard Hemming because they have a large eye. You need a few small straight pins, you need your scissors, and you need a thimble. The next step is to pin the first two pieces right sides together using a straight pin. You want to make sure that the corners are set by the pin so that you will end up in the correct place. Take your needle with your single thread and no knot, using your needle to make sure that you start correctly. You will take one small stitch, don't forget your thimble, then we will do a locking stitch, which is a back stitch at a small angle, which will lock the thread into place. Then you are going to simply load your needle 
with small stitches along the dotted line until you come to the pin. You have almost sewn your first segment. Now we will repeat the process of a lock stitch so that each segment is started and stopped with a lock stitch. In the beginning you will cut your thread and leave a small tail. You've just started your first grandmother's flower garden. As you can see we have put the first three segments on by attaching a single segment on these first three. Now I'm going to insert the next hexagon and you can see that I will use my pin to make sure I hit the corner and move the seam allowance out of my way Sometimes it takes a little bit to do. Again, using your needle, make sure that you start in the corner. You will be doing your lock stitch, and then do a running stitch by loading the fabric onto the needle. When you get to your corner, you'll remove your pin, do another locking stitch or back stitch if that's more comfortable. And now we will simply pivot to the next section, pick up a pin. And in the corner and continue. Be sure to use a locking stitch both in the beginning and at the end of each seam. By only being concerned about one segment at a time, this is a very quick, easy, and accurate way to piece hexagons. And now for our last segment. This is certainly great travel work, great sitting work while you're waiting while you're watching sports, doctor's offices, and the locking stitch by pulling with your fingers holding the needle you have no tension on the thread and the likelihood of it breaking is decreased. We now have one whole segment inserted perfectly with sharp corners. Now that you've finished the first round, you can certainly add a second round. I like to then stop and press. My favorite way is to press out and around. I find that it makes the whole block lay smoothly. From there, you can continue several rows, like a trip around the world. You can stop after two or three and add a set of diamonds for a pathway. You can do it in an oriental style on the diagonal. You can make a flower basket using the hexagons. You can use up your scraps and make a mosaic style, or you can make a field of diamonds by starting with four and adding twelve. I've created hexagons in a variety of sizes from a two inch finished edge down to a half inch finished edge and corresponding diamonds to match. I'd like to show you some of the quilts that are made from these combinations. To start with your diamond stamp, 
You can make diamond flowers with diamond leaves. You can make tumbling blocks. As you can see, it is three using a light, a medium, and a dark. You can do them in a variety of sizes. You can make a radiant star, which is made the same way as the flower garden with rounds, a single star, and seven sisters. Now that we've learned the technique, let's look at some design options. When you combine the stars with hexagons, as in this watercolor star quilt, you get them far apart. Here we've done two rounds of the diamonds with hexagons and other diamonds in this blazing star quilt. Here we have used a 30s crayon technique with stars as the border. And here we have some wonderful cherries with the diamonds as the leaves. Now that I've shown you some of the options using the diamonds and the hexagons, I'd love to have you visit my website, bykate.com, where I have many more options and lots of quilts to share. Please contact me if you have any questions. I'd love to have your emails and your photos and comments.